Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. We are back with our Robinson 2 probe, which is currently in orbit around Jupiter. Technically, the tracking station says it's a suborbital trajectory, but uh, we found out that the altitude that it's currently at, uh, 341, isn't... Well, I mean, it's touching the atmosphere somewhat, but not, not very deeply. So, uh, and much to my dismay, of course, because I had to actually use the engine to uh, do a retro burn in order to get into orbit. We are currently in a 30-day orbit, as you can see, and the first thing I want to do is try and get some science. Now, it's not showing me my science here, but I know I need 61 science to have a total of 1,000, which is what I need to unlock uh, the next tier of engines that I would like to get at. But... Uh, First, we do have a 19.46 degree inclination, and that might make it hard to hit some of Jupiter's moons. Let's see. Because uh, that's really the only way I'm going to get more science, I think, is to hit some moon or another. Uh, you can see the inclination just, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's significantly off, considering we're talking about Jupiter here. So, I mean... I wonder if the info will tell me, can we get, uh, actually if we focus on it. Okay, the smallest of the Galilean moons, Europa. Okay, so that's Europa actually. This is, because I don't remember the Galilean moons very easily. Uh, closest Galilean moon, uh, Io, Io, that's Io. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and lastly, Callisto. Okay. Looks like they're all in the same plane, huh? Okay. That's sort of unexpected, because, you know, you would think that they'll be a little bit different from each other, but I guess not. Okay. So, I guess they were sort of made from the same material or something. How much would it cost to correct this inclination issue? Yep, there we go. We got some sort of thing going here. 173 is not bad. 173, I can do that. Uh, how much? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this looks like the plan. Um, let me ch uh, adjust my inclination first. Uh, any way to... Hmm... I don't know if there's any way to add a maneuver here to... I want to get that encounter that we just saw if possible. Yeah, that one. Makes it less likely. That makes us crash into Jupiter. That's like it. Wait a minute. Oh! We've got an uh, encounter with Callisto here. That complicates matters. Wanted to get close to Europa too, but uh, hey, uh, how much does this cost? Okay, okay, so this is the 134 and this is the 180. We've got that. We can we can do that. And then we'll get uh, reasonably close to Yes, that's quite acceptable. Okay. All right, let's fly out and see what we can do. Maneuvers close to Jupiter will be difficult because we might lose communication once we're behind Jupiter with relation to the Earth. So we have to keep that in mind. It's not a given that we'll be in communication range. Oop, we see a little moon flying by there. Possibly Io, given that it's so close. Uh, maybe I should slow down a bit. Uh, heading pretty far out, as you can see. Jupiter now just a tiny little sp little sphere there. And it's going to get smaller. I know I was going to try and do air braking tests, but now that I've figured out that I can get a 
moon encounter with one of Jupiter's moons pretty straightforwardly. I think I'm gonna go for that instead. The science is more important. We at least got one sort of error breaking benchmark out of this and if I don't get another one I'm not gonna be too depressed. It's more important to get the science right now. Okay, lining up for the second of these burns. Pretty darn close. Once we uh, pass Callisto slash Ike, we'll be pretty darn close to getting an encounter with Europa as well. Okay, so for now I think I've got Ike at uh, 34,000. I could get closer, but then this one gets farther away. I'd rather pass by more than one moon of uh, Jupiter if possible. So I'll do this maneuver. Oh. Stop that. Nope, 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 nope. Well, that's uh that's looking pretty good, right? Or not, is it? No, well, that's that's exactly what I wanted. Hmm. Uh -huh. Let's see now. See, now we're getting closer, but we're getting further away from that one. Okay. I think, uh, oh, though that's a little bit jittery now. But I, I guess we'll do deal with that. That's fine. Let's just get this encounter. Uh, so, uh, Callisto. Okay, you got about 24 minutes for the encounter. Okay, here we are. This is what the flyby looks like. And the first thing we want to do is plot so that we can get this encounter. Wow. Seems a lot harder to encounter Europa, probably because it's so close to Jupiter's gravity. The further away you you are from the central body, the larger a sphere of influence you get. Okay, that's that's a pretty big burn to get that encounter. But we'll want to get close to Europa, I think. Yep, that's about as close as you get. Okay. Node me. And while we're turning, perhaps I can get a... No, I want a reading. Log gravity data. High over Callisto, of course. Transmit that data. And that'll get us the data that we were looking for, but I want to see Callisto. Where's Callisto? tough because we're really high over it. It's gonna be really tiny. Ah, let's do the burn. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, it's not that tiny at all. Pretty big moon. I mean, this height is about uh, geosynchronous orbit uh, with Earth. This is about the same height. I don't think Earth would look too much bigger. I mean, obviously it would look bigger, but... Too bad it's not in full sunlight. Nope. Oh. Was there another encounter there? With something? Oh, 
Well, let's focus here. Oh, th there was something else there. Uh, let's let's set Paula's target. No. Oh, I can't see what it might be. Interesting. Okay, 200 kilometers seems fine at this point. Let's take a better look at Callisto. Actually, it might be <laughs> might be easier to take a look at Callisto from the map view. That's Callisto. Ah. With this coloration, it seems almost Christmassy, if the red was a little bit redder. I have no idea what uh, what that's all about. Uh, let's see. Very thin atmosphere, comprised mostly of carbon dioxide and uh, rather intense ionosphere. Doesn't explain the color though, does it? Would like some explanation of the peculiar colors that we see here. Oh. Well. I am sure NASA would have figured out to pass by the moon on the correct side, but I did not. So we have limited opportunity to do anything. I don't think the thermometer or barometer will give us any results. Yeah. Uh, and those are probably messed up for all time now. Oh, we've still got some untransmitted data left. So I'm going to send that off. Uh, we should uh, check... Well, our Jupiter periapsis is now extremely high, it would look like. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Are we on a crash course for Jupiter now? Ah. That could be a problem. Okay. So that's what the little thing was trying to tell me. Alright. Looks like I'll have to head up a little bit more. I get the feeling I should do this outside of Ike's sphere of influence. Let's see. Not Ike. Callisto. Oh, that was quick. Not quite out yet. It's still got that little marker there. Hmm. We ought to be out. It says Ike escaped T plus 25 minutes, but it's not giving me... It's not letting me go! <laughs> what the heck? Well, I'll be safe. We'll have to adjust our orbit as we get close. So, bit of a miss on my part. Should have paid attention to my periapsis around Jupiter. And uh, it was somebody in the comments who mentioned uh, Maneuver Planner would give me a, give me a maneuver even if I couldn't click on an orbit. So. Glad for that tip. Okay. So we're gonna fly by Jupiter again. Here we go. I don't think we need to retract anything this time. This is still giving me from uh, Callisto. You know what, I'm gonna jump out to the Space Center and come back and see if it can give me the right sphere influence. Nope, no luck. It, uh, it's pretty stubborn. Doesn't uh, even show my jewel periapsis anymore. It sure looks like we're... Hey, 
a little bit too close to Jupiter. Yeah, inside of it, even. Let me try this again. But we're in the wrong... Uh, we're in the wrong sphere of influence. This gets worse and worse. Well, I'll just try passing by and see what happens. Let me just uh, do this burn, get the periapsis back, and then go around. If we survive, uh, Europa's our only bet after this. I don't think we're going to be able to make any other targets. Seems like we're in the right sphere of influence now. It's just uh, it's it didn't give me my periapsis because the number is going down. It'd be going up if it was like I think. Uh, we'll be lucky to get any sort of encounter with Europa now. That's good enough. Okay. Well, at least we are in the right sphere of influence and doing what we're supposed to. Let's go for it. You can see two of the moons of Jupiter nearby. Probably Io and Europa. So there's sort of a... I mean, the, I guess the moons of Jupiter are at this 25 degree inclination as well. Interesting. Not worried at all about the atmosphere because we've already seen that it doesn't extend this far. But I'm worried about loss of connection eventually as well as what we're going to do about Europa. So let me try and plot something for that. Probably a retro burn is the easiest thing. Doesn't seem to be doing anything though. Speed up. No. That costs way too much. How about further out? That costs a lot too. I don't think we're gonna get a Europa encounter like this. How far off are we from the others? Very. And uh, it's pretty substantial. Right. Nope, we've only got 200, so we're not going to be doing this. But we are in the plane of the moons, so maybe we'll get something. Let's just stay in this orbit. Ah, so close, yet so far. Never sure whether they might give me a encounter or not, just however briefly, but no. Okay, well that's the new situation. Is there a way to do something about that from out here? Probably not without losing the periapsis. Let's see if we can hit Io then. Oh, that's a lot closer. Really would have liked Europa, but... Io is not bad. Looks safe. Alright, we'll head out to that maneuver node. Okay, so in full disclosure, the game just crashed and of course that always leaves a bit of suspense about where the persistent file left us and it looks like it's not in a bad place. It's just, uh, just right there. So, let's continue. Okay, here we go. Burn for Europe. Uh, burn for Io. We're going for Io. Also known as Paul right now. Oh ho! Uh, well, that's just another Callisto encounter, but maybe we will swing by there again. Okay. 
But let's uh, focus on Paul first. Callisto is serious. I bet if uh, if you go into Jupiter system, there's a fair probability you'll get uh, trolled by Callisto slash Ike, which is appropriate, I guess, because Ike is always trolling around Duna when it's placed there. So, so a good choice of uh, planet, uh, I mean moon, to place as Callisto. Very high swing by of, well, I say high swing by of uh, Jupiter, but uh, even though it's 10,000 kilometers, it feels very close. Whoa. What the heck is going on here? I have never seen that before. Everybody, look, 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 look. It's a squiggly encounter line. What on earth? Io is weird. Quick, anybody with uh, connection to the squad people, uh, point this out to them. I don't know if they've seen this either. Maybe, maybe it's a thing in the uh, real solar system. I don't know. I've never seen it before. That might be a one-time only sort of thing. I'm almost tempted to get into over on Paul, but there's no way. We're going 21,000 meters per second. So we'll take the close flyby, that's for sure. But uh, let us do some science. Okay, high over IO, really. 198. Pretty good. Somebody thought that this is hard to encounter I guess because it's more than I think it's it's worth more than uh, Callisto was well, Callisto was unusually easy to encounter though not sure we're getting all of our signs here it says done but I don't yeah this there's a lot more signs to be done here Almost a shame that we're uh, done with the goo containers and the Science Junior. It would be nice to get some reading of Io. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check once again to see whether it's really all done. Oh, just a little bit more, but that's worth something. Oh! That's Io. <laughs> I, I, I kept pointing in this direction. That's Jupiter. Io's over here. Wow, look at that. That is an ugly looking moon. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry Io fans. Uh, <laughs> I know there must be Io fans out there. But uh, that is one ugly looking moon. Okay, we're probably close to Io with that little spin. Nope, still high, wow. That's unusual. And I'm sure, yeah. I'm not even going to try the temperature until we get a little bit closer. This is periapsis here. Gravity scan first, because it's most important. Okay, good. Near to it. Let's take a look at the uh, temperature. Ah, good. We get a temperature scan finally. But I'll have to hold off until transmitting. Hurry up, gravity scan. But give me all my science, please. Okay, transmit this one. Okay, 72, that's what I expected. Any more? Yeah, gravity always has a little bit more. And the barometer's messed up, okay. I assume that the temperature is all done? Yes, it is.
Well, that's... Oh, oh, uh, Jupiter setting... on Io's horizon there. Very interesting. Okay, uh, let's see what else we can encounter here. So we've done uh, Io and Callisto. We're gonna hit Callisto again, I think. Perhaps we can get close to Callisto this time. Ah, let's get into into Jovian space while it ends this this close to Io. I can't make a good maneuver right now. There we go. And at least this time Io released us unlike a certain other moon that I can name. So well right now we're not encountering anything. I think the time warping probably messed it up. Let's see, if we target Ike doesn't even show us an encounter. Okay, well, let's get rid of this. Okay, that's like that. Yeah, this is pretty close. Let's just check out Europa. Alright, well, we'll try and swing by Callisto again. Try and get a close to Callisto thing. Okay, we barely have enough fuel to do a close to Callisto thing. So that'll be the last thing we do with this probe. Alright, now we go to the maneuver node. So this will be the final burn with this probe and it will end up crashing into Jupiter. That's as close as we're going to get. Okay, so 531 kilometers. I hope that's close enough to Callisto for a, a near thing. I wonder what Lathe is standing in for. But anyway, uh, yep, let's take a look at this. Oh, well, I guess we'll approach it from here, and then uh, once we get into the sphere of influence, we can dip in. Where are you, Callisto? There you are. Oh, much better view. Okay, good. With Jupiter there, too. Okay. Um, come on. Okay, yeah. there we go. I should have the highest available textures installed for this. Don't look that great up close. But then again, I don't know what kind of photos we've actually got of uh, Callisto. There is a limit to our scientific knowledge about this particular moon. Still high. Well, there might be a limit here too. Well, are we uh, just going over to pole or something? Maybe that's why everything is so stretched out. Still high. Well, we might as well get that 4.9. So we didn't get the close to Callisto's information. That's a shame. But now we are going to discover the atmosphere of Jupiter up close and personal. Yeah, it's still doing that thing where Callisto for some reason likes to not give us up in terms of our sphere of influence. We end up stuck in Callisto's sphere of influence. I don't know why. Io was fine. Io didn't uh, make a fuss about it. Okay, well, just for a show, I'm going to retract the arms. Pretend like we're going to be going in streamlined when we're really not not even close. Yep, 
and perhaps somewhere in uh, Jupiter's atmosphere we'll be able to do a barometer reading. Ignore the altitude, that's not our altitude above Jupiter. I have no idea what our altitude, what that reading actually says. We, we seem to be going very high. Are we going to survive this? Where are we going? Okay, that's weird. Uh, okay, I think I better go to the tracking station. This has probably gone very wrong. Okay, it has us here right now, and our orbit looks like that. Okay, well, I'll take it. <laughs> At least uh, we fulfilled the crashing into Jupiter thing, but uh, it looks like we missed the first time around. make sure we are retrograde. Whether we get any science out of this will depend on whether we maintain communication. Gravioli's already been done around Jupiter. We just need some barometer reading or thermometer reading from the atmosphere. Heading over to the dark side. It won't remain dark for long though. Flame effects and all that. We won't have much time to transmit any data. Oh crud. Okay, well, that makes it a little bit harder. Let me. Oh, no connection anyway. We'll still get data on the atmospheric effects. That's, that's nice, I think. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, it's going to spin wildly out of control because it's not... the drag is all over the place. Ah, okay. Total crush under 160 kilometers. Very well. Okay. That's the end of the Robinson 2 probe to Jupiter. Let's go back to the Space Center to find out how much science we've collected. So, we got more than 500 science. We got probably 600 science in this episode so far. And probably that's about it for the science accumulation in this episode. So I wanted to unlock this advanced rocketry so that we get some more of these engines. Um, you know, that aerospec looks good actually. Yeah, let's try this. Uh, the this was a uh, this was an attempt by uh, Rocketdyne to make an aerospec engine out of the J2 system. I don't know how related to the J2 it actually was though, but... And then what I really wanted was the Mitsubishi LE7A, and then... Well, not that... Well, that, that'll that be important too, but we really need the Vulcane for the EADS rocket. So I'll unlock these, and this is going to cost 1500 science, and going to get those... There's the Vulcane. But probably in the next episode, we're going to head over to Japan and try out the... Well, either we're going to head out to Japan and try out the Mitsubishi LE-7A, and I'll design a new rocket with that, or we're going to try out the Aerospike. So those are the two possibilities. Now, is there anything lingering here that I really should unlock? Pants control systems. I've never been a fan of launch escape towers. Lots of RCS, SAS kind of things here. I have no idea. Oh, that's a solid rocket booster. Batteries. Where we can't get the RTG right now. Hmm. Drilling. Cathane. 
That could be interesting. Alright, I'll decide whether to unlock Cathane in the next episode, though. I'll have to think about that. But that could be a possibility. We could unlock Cathane and start doing that sort of thing. Otherwise, I don't think any of these are really... Ex oh, these are completely useless. Um, airplane parts. I haven't got uh, most of the airplane mods installed, so that's not a huge reason to play around with those in this so far. Okay, so, yep, as far as unlocking, I'm looking at Cathane, and then as far as building, looking at a uh, new rocket, but I'm gonna save that for the next episode. We explored two moons of Jupiter, and uh, unlocked some new rocket parts, and I'll save what I do with those for the next episode. So, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.